Hey y'all and welcome back to another episode in a new season of Faith and Friends. I am so glad you're here. I'm Georgia Brown, your host, your friend, your sister in Christ and biggest fan and I am so pumped that you're here today to join us in this conversation. Here at Faith and Friends, we are all about scripture stories and songs, and I cannot think of a better way to start season four than with one of my favorite people ever, the one and only Karen Kingsbury. Karen Kingsbury has been a longtime friend of Faith and Friends, being on episode 30 and episode 50. But here again today, we're going to talk a lot about God's timing and Speaking of God's timing, she just released a new book this week called The Baxters, and we're going to chat a lot about that as well. So I pray that this conversation meets you right where you're at today. And so let's dive right in. Enjoy. I am just so excited that we get to hang out today, Miss Karen. This is the third time you've been on Faith and Friends. It's amazing. I look forward to it. I was like, yes, I get to talk to Georgia. I was so excited. I'm so grateful for you. And man, oh man, I've loved your books, but it's been so fun to get to know you this year. And we just finished up your beautiful event a couple of weeks ago with Belong. And I just have been on fire ever since then. And it's just been incredible. And this past week you released the prequel of the Baxters. How are you doing? This has been fun. It has been a whirlwind and it has been so fun. And I have to say, I wish that you would give us an acapella kind of version of the song that you and Tyler wrote for Belong was incredible. That was such a great song. And all the ladies are still talking about it. So that was amazing. And then, of course, the release of the Baxter's prequel, which, you know, Georgia, I have come to look at it in a new light. You know, it's so funny. Things go off in my house all the time. And it's I'm just, so sorry. I, sometimes I have like Toby will walk by and he, I don't know. He sounds like a tap dancer, tap, tap, tap everywhere he goes anyway. So let's just consider that part of the joy of the back. Yeah, welcome to season four, everybody. We're here in Love Arkansas it. for this first episode. And um, that's Tell the telephone me. fax machine going off. I didn't even know we still had fax machines, Miss Karen. <laughs> We're going to consider it the harps of the angels. We're going to consider it just, you know, that a beautiful, joyful noise. Yeah, a joyful, a joyful noise. That's what it is. <laughs> Instead of facts, can't be joyful. That's great. That's right. That's right. Okay, so so the Baxter's prequel as it comes out, I just wanted to say this is my new way of looking at the word release. And I don't know if I had this last time we talked, but it's not like it used to be, I don't know, it's funny. It used to have pressure associated with it. Mm. Like, oh no, like how well will it do? And will my publisher be happy? And will people like it? That's like not, God gave me the story. Yeah, Totally the Lord put it on my heart to write it. I did that. I feel very good about it. I feel very good about all that I could have done through his strength. I mean, and I don't write anything without him, but now I release it to him. And so it's not my release day. It's my release it to Jesus day. And now he can do with it what only he can do. So it's out of my hands. And and that's a good feeling. Yeah, that's pretty freeing because it's his in the first place, like you said. And once you once you shared that with me, I just felt like this weight kind of lifted with everything in this life. You know, it's never us. You know what I mean? And we put so much pressure on us and my goodness, it's so beautiful. And the book's incredible. And, oh, I just am in love with every story that he writes in and through you. And what I love is that the Lord in his kindness is like, okay, you've done these books. He's like, I have some more steps I want you to take. And it's so cool to see your obedience. Like, my gosh, I just, I love your books, Miss Karen, but the more I've gotten to know you is, is I just love who you are. And I see the woman that just walks without fear of the future, that walks peacefully and you, you don't run anywhere. It, it's just the most beautiful thing. And I see kids my age and girls and they're hustling and doing all these things for Jesus, but sometimes they forget Jesus. And then when I see you just walking, I'm like, okay, I can just walk. And you walk through these stories and you, you take your time through the heartache. You take your time through the tension and you let Jesus resolve it all. And so this whole idea of release, I'm here for, and I just hope everybody else can apply that to their own life, you know? Exactly. That's, I mean, what are you carrying today and what do what he, what he has called you to do, do it 
you know, like as if you're working for him and not for men, right? That's what scripture yeah. tells us. So do it you know, to the best of your ability in him, you, not mm-hmm. even your best of your ability, the best of your ability with him, uh, with him leading and guiding and directing and providing, then you have to let it go and you have to give it back to him because there's just so much, like you said, people who are, they're striving to maybe be, you know, have a platform or have, you know, an influence in some way. And, and the only way to do that is for the Lord to open the door. I just had an interview before this that they, they said, how did you make this happen? How did you make, how did you, how did you get to this? Place? How did you make that happen? I said, there is no way I could have made it happen. There, I'm just, I'm, there, I'm just not able to do that. Not from day one, you know, I can remember day one, finishing my first Christian novel, like, you know, inspirational fiction, like what I do. Mm -hmm. And I had done other things before and I'd done sports writing and news writing. And I had written some true crime books, which just, I can't even fathom. I would never have read them, (laughs) Um, but that's what God used that to let me come home and be home to stay with Kelsey when she was born. So it was a miracle, but I I was just like, I really want to, I really want to do this. And my agent at the time dropped me and he said, he said, you were going to be a star. Why would you want to, why would you want to do these books with these Christian themes? Mm-hmm. And so he, didn't, he wasn't a believer. He didn't understand that's if I, and I remember getting on my knees by my bed and saying, Lord, if I am the only reader, I'm okay with that. This is what you're calling me to write. And I would be all right. If I'm the only reader, I'm not going to strive. And I even, you know, in the books that followed, I felt the Lord telling me to stop looking at the best selling with the best sellers list. Don't look because what is that? Is that the validation I'm looking for when I write? It's not, it's not the validation comes when I meet somebody in Branson, Missouri, and they walk up and tears in their eyes. And they say, I lost my son at age 24, but you know what? Your books got me through. They took me back to Jesus and like, okay, there's where I feel the pleasure of the Lord, not on some list, not by trying to, you know, kick down doors that he has closed. I mean, it's just got to be all him. So, so release whatever it is that you feel you're called to do, release the effort and release the end result to him. Who? You're getting me teary. Yes. Preach, preach. It's the truth. And you'll never regret waiting on the Lord. I I love the verse that says those who wait on the Lord, they'll have their strength renewed. And that's so countercultural to what we think that waiting would bring strength and renewal. Absolutely. You know, another verse that I memorized this last week, uh, Psalm 23, Mm -hmm. verse 13. No, not Psalm 23, Psalm 27. I'm working on it still. We're memorizing. That's right. Verse 13 and 14, Psalm 27, 13 and 14. I am confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, take heart and wait for the Lord. And that's like powerful to me. So I love it. Yeah, no, that's so powerful. And I would love to know, like, how do you wait? Like, what do you do in the waiting? Because when I was in college, I remember the dorms, how the stairs would be locked on either side and you could only get on your dorm floor. And so when you wait for that next door to open, something that me and my musical friends would like to say is we'd praise him in the hallway. And so until we'd wait for that next door to open, we'd just praise him. And sometimes we would actually go sing in the stairs because the acoustics were so good. But what do you do? in the waiting? Well, you know, I have this wonderful family. I have an awful lot of friends that are so wonderful too, that I can spend time with. So I, I mean, sometimes I, it's like, okay, Lord, give me the wisdom to know what I can do today to get to that next step. And currently that thing is that I want to, our family um, is in agreement that the Lord is saying, make a movie. And whether that's for streaming services, whether that's like, so not the ones that are being made by other people, which are such a blessing, but to make, make one ourselves and to pull the pieces of that together, bring in people who know what they're doing and who are like-minded and who share our faith, but there's only so much you can do each day to that end. So it's like, Lord, give us the wisdom greater than gold, greater than anything. Give us that wisdom. Then we'll know what to do today. And then you have to set it down. Because sometimes it's going to, I mean, then it's like, okay, let's go to the park and and take a walk and let's play with the grandkids and run around and, and, you know, make memories because, you know, I look back and I think I have had family working around me for 20 years 
-hmm. whether it's my mom and my sister, or then as my kids got older, they found their roles in this sort of ministry of fiction that we have of storytelling. And I've loved that. I wouldn't trade that like because it means that we get to work together, but we get to play together. Maybe we go to the zoo and that's our form of waiting is rejoicing in the creation that God has made around us. So we, we don't do, we don't fret. I know that we don't, um, you know, life is earth is just too short, whether it's a hundred, 120 years. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's say it's the maximum that God gave us at this point. So if you live that long, that's still a short amount of time. You know, it's just, yeah. it's, it's 10, 10 or 12 decades. It's not that long. So there's no point in fretting about it. And at the end of the day, sometimes I'll to help myself. Sometimes I will like say, imagine the Baxters are on TV already right now. And they're not, but imagine they were, Mm -hmm. and they are the top show across the land and everyone's talking about them. And the books are flying off the shelf. People are giving their lives to the Lord Mm -hmm. and it's just opening all these you know, opportunities and and all the resources to give back to the Lord and to, to glorify him. Imagine that was today and how different would it actually be? And the answer is it wouldn't be different. I still would have started my day in his word. Mm -hmm. I still would have started by getting my feet on the floor, praising him for restoring my soul while we slept, you know, overnight, thanking him for my family. In other words, it's his to take and his to do with what he wants to do. I'm fine. If he doesn't open doors like that, then praise God, we're, we're going to walk out this life, you know, leading people to Jesus, having Bible studies, singing his praises, like you said. So it's like waiting because he knows the best timing and, and enjoying the way, you know, having fun in it. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. Oh, I just love it. And oh, I'm trying to remember, I, I finished one of your books last night and started another one. I'm going back to the redemption series and the girls were going back and forth talking about, well, God's word says to always rejoice, but this is a situation that's pretty hard to rejoice in, but he's calling me to rejoice. How can I rejoice in this? And in the waiting, we can rejoice again. I say to you rejoice and it's beautiful. And joy doesn't maybe always look like laughter and a smile. It can look like stillness and sitting in hard moments, but happiness comes from happenings and joy comes from Jesus. So we can always have a little bit of that around, if not a lot of it. (laughs) And so that's beautiful. Georgia, that is so, I mean, did you just make that up on the spot? Because that was really good. Happiness comes from happenings. And joy comes from Jesus. You should, that's, I think you need a t-shirt. You want to co-write on that next number (laughs) one hit? (laughs) I think that's pretty good. So fun. So fun. And excuse me, when we talk about God's timing, I know that there's been a lot of talk of this Baxter TV show for, for years now. And I can't imagine like, it's like, stop, go. It's like that game that the kids play, like red light, green light, yellow light. And how has that felt? And was there a point where you're just like, okay, Lord, my hands are up. It's yours, your timing. Was there ever that? Like a hundred of those. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, what we do is when, especially when we're driven to, to act and when, when the Lord says move, like, I'm like, yes, sir. And I'm going to do something like I am a doer. I'm not just a dreamer, yeah. but I want to do in his timing. And I want to do it and do things, you know, according to his calling on my life. But when, but many times, I mean, like I have a problem more than a hundred times where I've had to say, okay, fine. It's been all these years. So I, I'm going to just give it back to you, Lord. And then, you know, a week will go by and I'll think, or I could, you know, start a viral campaign where people storm the virtual gates of Amazon and say, please, will you please release this show? <laughs> I might do that. But like, I, I come and then I'm like, no, no, I'll give it back to you, Lord. Like it just, it's a, it's a battle to walk because these are such precious stories. And, and now, you know, so Amazon bought MGM. So MGM previously owned the Baxters. They were the ones that paid for it. And Roma Downey, who is lovely and, and loves Jesus, she's the executive producer and she plays Elizabeth. So we really are going to love these shows, but they're sitting in a can. And what happened was Amazon bought MGM for like $9.2 billion. That was public information. And they just closed on that deal like a month and a half ago. So now Amazon owns the Baxters and Georgia, I do not even think they know 
I don't think they know they even have it. They bought like, it'd be like if you bought this giant warehouse and you didn't know what was in that one box on shelf three in room two. Right, you just right. didn't know. Mm-hmm. So they're having meetings with their studio um, department heads with from MGM and Roma's meetings, not even on the books yet. So we need to pray for that, that she'll be able to get before these people and go, Hey, I also have this show three seasons filmed. Like maybe we should air it. And I think at that point, and maybe, you know, maybe it is something that the readers can get behind where we can say, you know, hey, at Amazon Prime or whatever their thing is, you know, we're so excited that you have the Baxters. When are you going to air it? Because we know it stars at Roma Downey, like, you know what I mean? Something like that. And then if everybody (laughs) says that, they're going to be like, what is this thing that we have? So anyway, that's how my brain works. And then I go, okay, that's too long to be thinking about it (laughs) because God can open the door right now today if he wants to. Right. So then I let it go again and do it all the time. Mm. I'm glad to know we're both human and in this same boat. I feel that uh, every day, a roller coaster of emotions, and it's like, stop, go. Okay, I'm going to release. And then you hold it again. And at the end of the day, he literally, like you said, like he opens doors no man can open, he shuts doors no man can shut. And he can do it in a moment. That's like, right. Literally with his breath, he literally yes. breathed this world into what we see, you know? And so he didn't think it, he literally breathed it, his breath, his Ruach, like it's the most beautiful thing. And so we'll never regret waiting on him. That's right. Never. It's just beautiful. And I can't wait for the show at belong. I want to talk about belong a little bit because it was so fun. Oh, a little bit of your song was so good. Oh yeah. Oh, y'all, it was so fun. Tyler is Karen's son and he's so fun. And he's been a, such a great friend to me over the past few months. And I just really have loved getting to know him. And we have so much fun together. We were like, let's write a song for Belong. And the little tagline is, you be E-Long, you be E-Long. It's so fun. And oh gosh, I think we should record it at some point. Don't you think? I do. I really do. It's so, you can imagine how many places people would love that. I'm speaking at a brunch, you know, at my own church coming up on May 7th. And I'm thinking that's the song they should have, you know, you belong, you belong here. You belong to the family of God. You belong at your certain table. You have table two, whatever it is, you know, that you belong. And, And God wants us to feel that. Yeah, no, for sure. And speaking of just table two, that was the table I was at at Belong. And oh, God is so cool in the details of where he places everybody. And I know so much prayer has gone into every little decision from, you know, what book to write next, what movie, what show, what what decision of what to even do through the day. Like, I know that you guys walk in such faithful prayer, but even down to the table, the women that I met, like... Only God alone. Like, yes, he used you and your team to place everyone right where they were. But it's just so beautiful to not miss those mirroring moments where we can just see the father through everything. And I just, I want our friends to see that today as you're in God's timing, look at what's around you. You know, it's so special. Yeah, we, I always say that, you know, when I go to speak places, one of my favorite talks is to love, you know, the things I've learned through life to write a bestseller with the days God's given me and not just the bestsellers, you know, those other bestsellers are are great. Those are for him and he'll use them. But my life story, that's the one I want to be a bestseller. And for that one, you know, that we need to love well. And I talk about first John four, seven and eight that we love because he loved us first and to laugh often because Proverbs 17, 22, laughter is good medicine. You're going to laugh about it later. You might as well laugh about it now. <laughs> um, and look for the miraculous because especially as girls, we tend to, you know, sometimes you can, we can just be sort of dragged down by like, okay, we have dishes or we have diapers to do, or we have decisions and, and all this drudgery. And we get caught up thinking life is like kind of waiting till the weekend. And that is not life. I mean, whatever stage, you know, if you're a person who's going through school or working, you know, at a job that wasn't your goal and you have all these dreams ahead, but just looking for the miraculous in the moment and realizing, like, I remember sitting down at our table here and, and it was like, we were, you know, it's a fast pace. We're trying to get all the bags put together for belong and all the little gifts, you know, gift items and going down the kind of the main roster of the names. And we'd been praying about these names this whole time, but now it's time to put them on tables. And I just said, okay, 
let's take a moment and let's specifically pray that we put these women at the tables they're supposed to be at. And do you know, my sister was sitting next to a woman, probably the only one in the room who had the exact story as her. I mean, a single mom, just one son um, who had gotten married and moved away and just, you know, it, it wasn't, wasn't spending much time with the son and was a little heartbroken over that exact story. And she's sitting next to her, you know, and to hear that over and over, like, oh, my table. And I, you know, I, I just didn't overthink it. I let the Lord move my hand, like put the people where they're supposed to be. And, and he did it. That just warms my heart so much. He's so good at that. It's like, okay, like, you know what you're doing. I'm going to let go. Like, okay, I can relax. I can relax. Oh, that's stunning. I, I could tell you so many stories right now of things that people told me from the conference and my gosh, it's just, it's all him. It's all him. And I'm so grateful. And so I want to know like, what's next? I know you have another conference coming up and can people still register for that? Is that still open? It is still open. It's um, so it's called believe and believe is going to be for writers. So it's people who are dreaming of writing a book and it's all ages. I think it's uh, 17 and up can attend mm-hmm. and they can register. So, you know, there's two different price points. One, if you get the hotel and you want to stay there on site and it's the same thing, three days, this time it's, it's June 15th through the 17th. So it's Wednesday through a Friday and people can add extra, you know, rooms on or bring their husband or their wife or whatever it's for, you know, men and women, any kind of any age that are dreaming of writing a book or have written a book and need some help turning that story into a bestseller. So I'm teaching everything I know about writing a bestselling book because, you know, God gives the gift and he only he can open the door, but we have to do our part. He calls us to be excellent. Mm-hmm. And the way to do that is to learn. And I've got 17 sort of abbreviated abridged courses that will be taught over those three days. So it truly is a writing intensive. And uh, last year we sold out and uh, this one woman, she said, I learned more at believe than I did in grad school. I was like, she went to grad school to be a writer. So, and then on top of that, then we allow our students, you know, who finish the the three days, then they get a certificate of completion Mm -hmm. and they get a recommendation from me that they can use my name if they go to submit to an agent or to um, an, any kind of publisher. And then also we give them six months to submit a proposal to our team. We look over the proposals and we get back to them with either the reality that, you know, they're just, if it's not ready or we're not, that's not, it's not what we're looking for. And if it, if it is something we're looking for, like if it's that diamond in the rough, that's ready to be published then we, I take that and I give that to my publisher at Simon and Schuster. So it's, it's a really nice, easy way to get seen by a top publisher. If you're ready. That's awesome. Y'all should totally check that out. Register. I'm sure it's at karenkingsbury.com. You can get that, you know, go to karenkingsbury.com and to my events link, or just do uh, karenkingsburybelieve.com. Perfect. I love it. You're making it easy for all of our friends. Just one (laughs) click away. I got to tell you, you were talking about writing the bestseller of your life. I was thinking about you the other day as I was standing at my friend's wedding because the minister, first of all, it made me think of Pastor Mark and the Baxters. My gosh, I felt like I was living one of the, one of the weddings, my stars. It was beautiful, but he's standing there before my bestie from eighth grade and her now husband, And he looks at both of them in front of all of us in this beautiful white chapel with all of our pink bridesmaids dresses and everyone to the nines. And he looked at them and he was like, the next pages are empty and this is your story. And he said, it's up to y'all. He didn't say y'all. It's up to you both on how you will write the next days of your life. And I just was like, teary. I was like, like, this is real. Like we, it is up to us. Like you said, faith in works to work with the Lord on how we're going to write these stories. And are we going to let him be at the center? Are we going to trust his timing? And it was just beautiful. And I thought of y'all. Oh, that's so, and you were beautiful. I saw the pictures, the pale pink dress, just so beautiful. But you're right. I mean, it's a beginning. It's a page one, you know, that old 
Carpenter's song, We've Only Just Begun. Mm -hmm. And it's just so true when you have a a moment like that at a wedding. And it's true for any of us. Like if we've had a, if we're like, okay, I'm done with this, whatever, you know, addiction or obsession or idol or whatever it might be, you can set it down and today can be your day one. And you can start again and you can say, the rest of this story is unwritten. I am going to walk in the ways of the Lord. I'm going to work hard because there is hard work involved as well. Mm -hmm. We don't just sit there and let it happen to us. It's not how God, want, like you said, faith without works is dead. Yeah. So, you know, but taking a, seizing that chance to realize that the finite number of pages that remain in your story are yet unwritten. So let's carve out some white space for Jesus. Amen. And as I think about weddings, I just wonder, what were you thinking on your wedding day to Mr. Donald? Did you ever think you'd be where you are today? Like, it's kind of crazy and beautiful. Like, wow. I mean, we were so in love and so in love with Jesus. So remember, I was, I don't know if you know, but I was newly a believer. Like, yeah, we got married in July of 88. So we're all coming on 34 years. Um, but but I had just given my life to the Lord in December. So just like not even a year earlier. And so we, we were dirt poor, which was kind of charming. Um, we lived in a garage we, we were going to, I was going to be moving into this garage. Um, there was this, they called it the bunker because somehow back in the eighties, they thought if you built a one room, like a one, you know, single garage in your backyard, just like a small building and had no windows, then if there was a nuclear war, for sure, you'd be fine. Just for sure. Just, they called it the bunker. That literally was what it was. It was meant for the cold war days, just in case nuclear war ever starts, which to go in the bunker, be fine. So anyway, that, that had been, you know, many years before. And so now, um, you know, that they didn't use it for anything. And it was dusty old building in a tiny, I mean, it was so small, Georgia, we had a couch. That's all our only furniture that they had came with it. And so it was old, lumpy, you know, dusty, we hit it and dust comes up and you open up, it was a pullout bed. Mm-hmm. So you, you open it up and it was, I mean, pure springs and foam. I mean, it was just, you did, it was mostly springs. That's just how it was. That's what we had. That was our first bed. Then to give the tour, you would just sit on the couch there. And then if the bed was open, it was just the, uh, about a 15 inch walkway around it. And that was it. And some bookcases that were built into the wall. And we knew we were, that was where we were going to start. And we standing up there that day in front of family and friends, it was just um, all week. It was just us and God. And we just didn't care. We didn't yeah. care if we didn't have money or, you know, I, of course I dreamed of being an author, but I was a, I was a reporter at that time and working long hours in that 10, 12 hour days. He was studying to be a teacher and a basketball coach, but we could have never known. We could have never imagined. We didn't, we weren't even thinking about kids. We'd never made a decision not to have kids, but we just, it wasn't even on our radar. And then adoption, that was never on our radar. You know, any, any, we would never have imagined. We just knew we had Jesus Mm -hmm. and we had each other and that was all we needed. I love it. I love it. When you said, welcome to my humble abode, you really meant it. Um, welcome yeah. to the humble bunker. <laughs> we used to just laugh. We, 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 the first piece of furniture we got was a um, uh, picnic table for $99 at Walmart. Yeah. And we set it out on the patio because there was a patio, we, you know, a distance between us and like the main house and the poor dear sweet woman who owned the main house, she was a, a widow mm-hmm. and she was not a believer and she was also an alcoholic. So she had a really hard life and she just kind of wandered around and she had the first, they didn't, they had like, she had delivery services bringing her alcohol. So it was really sad. So mm-hmm. she was the mom of someone we knew at church. And so they said, just, you can have, you can live here for a hundred dollars a month, but just pray for mom. And so we just prayed for her. But anyway, so she was okay. If we didn't come in the house, she didn't really want us. And so we sat on this picnic table on the patio and Donald would play his guitar and we would sing praise songs under the stars and just, we just rejoice. We just were so thankful and so happy. And so we were still living there when we found out we were pregnant with Kelsey and it, that was my first test of faith because it was like, oh, what in the world? Like, how could this be God's timing? We were not trying, well, we were trying not to get pregnant. Mm-hmm. And um, this was just, you know, God's timing. And our, Donald is such a man of God and he's such a man of faith that he was just beaming. He was so excited. He's like, we're going to have a baby. 
I'm like, I'm going to know this child. Like I work 12 hours a day and you're in school. Like, what are we, you know, how are we going to do this? And he said, no, no, you're just going to pray, pray every day. We're going to both pray that God will show us a way for you to work at home. I'm like, I just, I, I did it out of obedience, but I surely didn't see that happening. And he did it, you know, he prayed faithfully and it was you know, four days before my maternity leave was up that I got the, the first book deal. So it, you know, God, it's almost always going to be like that Red Sea. We can't see, we can't see the rest of this day. We can't see through, you know, next week or the next year or month, but we can follow him mm-hmm. and he will gradually part that Red Sea and he will take you to the impossible places. Mm. I love it. And basically what I'm hearing is you say and pray, stay in prayer, stay faithful. And mm-hmm. it's, it's all about faith. Truly. He says, look at this mustard seed. If you have this amount of faith, and then I don't know who it was, but someone told me recently, if you have that mustard seed in your hand, but you don't plant it, mm. you know, so we can hold on to it and say, I have my faith. I have my faith. But we got to plant that faith. And you did by listening to the wisdom of your husband and the Lord and saying, okay, Lord, like I'm going to trust you even when I can't see or even when I don't feel it. I know you're working. That's beautiful. It's been such a story. One day I should write my own story because like, it is just our story. Like we kind of just, you kind of, but there's so many beautiful lessons of faith in it. And that's, what's been fun. I'm here for, I think that would be a bestseller if you write the story of your life. So uh, I'd be the first to sign up for that uh, pre-order, but instead of pre-ordering that one right now, we need to talk about the Baxter's prequel. If people haven't started reading the Baxter's, tell us, should this be the one that they start with? It really should. This is the new book one. So I have a new book one because it's been 20 years since I wrote the first book one. Wow. And that was redemption. That was in, it came out in 2002, 20 years ago, like this month. So I thought, how do I like these new people like you? I mean, there's new people who I can't get them to read 20 books to go, okay, now I'm ready for the TV show. Mm -hmm. So I thought I need a new book one, go back to Carrie's wedding and, you know, her wedding day, which is what we, it all takes place on Carrie's wedding day. Um, the entire story of the Baxter's prequel, except there's an awful lot of flashbacks. Mm-hmm. And then there's some really deep conversations and it's the post wedding, incredibly crazy, you know, tornadoes, I mean, wild things happening. Someone's choking, someone's having a rescue. I mean, it's so much going on. It's a lot. Um, it's a lot. And it all takes place on that wedding day. And you know, it's, it's really beautiful to get to be a part of that story from both Carrie's perspective, Ashley's perspective, and even Elizabeth, who is on the front porch early in the morning, praying over her daughter and over the wedding and over this marriage and not quite settled in her spirit. And that's part of life that sometimes you're praying for someone who doesn't seem like they're maybe taking the choice that you see God leading them toward. And they're not, they're not really doing that, but you know, with, with family, And with our faith, we always have to see the long game. It's Mm -hmm. not just what about today? It's okay, Lord, I trust you for the rest of the days too. So let's love in a way that wants to still be loving that person 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now and not break, you know, burn the bridges and break down the barriers or the connections between us today. So there's some really beautiful maturity that we see from Elizabeth and John, the parents in um, the Baxter's prequel, but at the end of the day, it is a new book one and it will prepare you for all that is ahead. Yes. It's so good. I've already finished it twice over. It's so good. I love that you did it all in one day. I think that was the most beautiful thing. The details, the lessons learned in this book are really deep and really stunning and man, we can all learn from it. And I think one thing I really learned is keep leaning into the Lord like mm-hmm. those little nudges, if you're not settled in your spirit, like you said, you see these themes and it's like, okay, this is where I can see the Lord. And this is how it connects with my own life. It's, it's just beautiful. And I love it so much. And I didn't talk to you about this before, but I'm just going to tell you now, I was hoping that we could maybe give away one of the, the books to celebrate the yes. new season of faith and friends. Let's give away five. <gasps> Let's do it. 
five, the number of grace. High five. Let's do it. Let's do a high five. Let's do five, five of them out there for you who are watching and it will be special. So I will give you five copies. I'll sign them and um, I'll say something about you in them, Georgia. So everyone will know it's a special edition that they get just for them. How fun. Well, faith and friends community, we love you very much. And by now, you better know that I love Miss Karen because she's been on here three times. I think, girl, I think you are the most brought back guest so far because you're just incredible. Uh -oh. And I just, I just love you. Well, I am honored. And Georgia, if I had a, po if I had a podcast, you would be my like, once a week, we are going to check in with Georgia and we're going to give <laughs> us a joy because you have so much joy. A little coffee <laughs> chat. This morning I read, actually did read Philippians 4. That was my, <gasps> I was in Philippians 4 today. And then here we've spent so much time talking about rejoicing and, and even just being content in the waiting. Yeah. And that's all there. So anyway, it, you, you are so much fun to be with and I love mm. these times with you. I love them too. You're the best. And I'm excited for all that's to come. I truly am of the movies, the TV shows. And one more thing before we go, I, I saw you say this on, I think it's your, is it Tuesday chats that you do on Facebook? What are those story called? Time Tuesday. Story time, story time Tuesday. Yes. Story time Tuesday. I love catching those and just seeing what you're up to, but I loved that someone had commented saying, well, I don't have pure flicks. And I know that your new series is going to be on pure flicks. And I just love how you responded. And you said, well, maybe you should think about getting it. And I know we need to wrap up soon, but I just wanted to thank you because my gosh, there is a lot of just like hmm, out there. there and I mean, for you to I just, Oh, come on, girl. Tell I mean, me all about I'm going to be, I'm going to be talking about that a lot. I think in the months to come is just like, you know, jump over like for the cost of a grande latte, like a, a large coffee, you can have pure flicks, you know, and that, so this is going to, we're talking about a thousand tomorrows, which is so not the Baxters, but a thousand tomorrows will be out at the end of the year as a TV show. And it's going to be on pure flicks. And I made that decision to have it be on pure flicks. I didn't have to choose that. That was me yeah. saying, yes, I, I believe in that platform. Mm -hmm. um, Sony Affirm purchased it and it's really a lot, a lot um, improved. It just keeps improving. Yeah. And their goal is a very high bar for quality of programming. And so this will be a Sony Affirm original TV show that will show on Pure Flix. But like, why not spend $5 a month to support something and to be, you know, nurtured and, and edified by programming that supports your beliefs, faith, family, um, and not to, and you know, there's, there's, and there's already hundreds of shows on that and there's new ones being added all the time that are better than people mm -hmm. think they really are. So that'll be, a, it's, it's a good thing to be talking about. I will keep people updated on that at karenkingsbury.com. So my website, and, uh, and you can go there even now and see the Baxter's prequel book trailer. So not everyone does a book trailer, but there's a book trailer for the Baxter's prequel. And there's even even some dialogue, like some voiceover, that it's one of the most powerful trailers that we've had. So that's at KarenKingsbury.com. Mm, so important. I'm so here for this. I just think of the verse that says, be holy, because I am holy. And we just need to chase holiness and pursue righteousness. And we can do that through what we're taking in, because the eyes of the lamp are the eyes of the lamp to the body. So y'all, if the eyes are healthy, the whole body's healthy and your books and scripture and these shows, they keep me healthy alongside fruits and vegetables and some good old meat and we'll be good. <laughs> Amen. I love it. It's, it's what, it's what makes us go. So it's so wonderful. It's a wonderful gift to be able to be so filled with the spirit that you are showing joy out to everybody who comes near you. And yes, through the eyes, the eyes are certainly, you know, it's not just what we take in, but it's the way our eyes look to others. And, and it's proof that the Holy spirit lives in us. And I'll tell you, we don't want to quench that spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm so excited that we're giving away these five books. I am pumped. So y'all better head on over to, I am Georgia Brown, check it out. I'm so excited. And I might have to post our little selfie that we took at belong. And they can oh, like yes. that picture and do some yes. commenting and we'll just keep up with you at KarenKingsbury.com. And y'all make sure to keep up because I'm just so excited for all what the Lord is doing. Let's do this, Georgia. Let's get a quick picture before we're done. And then I can post that today. that would be fun. Oh, perfect. Okay. I'm we'll do it like this. Let's see. I'm really not good at selfies. Um, there we go. And now we look up. Okay. 
Okay. We'll get Perfect. that. Perfect. That's going to be so cute. You are my favorite interview and you are my favorite influencer. Um, mm-hmm. All the girls that follow you, I just, they're so blessed to have someone like you to look up to. So thank you mm-hmm. for having me. Thank you. It is all glory to God. And I love you so much and I will see you soon. And, oh, I just never want these conversations to end. I'll see you soon. Okay. Sounds good. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Isn't Miss Karen so wonderful? Friend, thank you so much for joining us today. I pray that you're leaving this conversation with a little bit more peace and a little bit more joy. I know I am for sure. Y'all, I got to confess, I always have one of her books in my purse. So if you're ever around me, ask me what book I'm reading and I'll pull it out. (laughs) Anyways, I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day and I can't wait to see you next week. But until then, do not forget, there is a song on your heart. Only you can sing. Your voice is important.